Hershey's milk chocolate with whole almonds. If you grew up in the United States, this chocolate probably tastes pretty normal to you. No, not just the almond Hershey bars, Hershey bars in general. But if you grew up in literally any other country, this chocolate probably tastes a little off to you. It's pretty good, I like it. I was once a beloved chocolate fan of Hershey's until I went to other countries and tasted theirs. If you've ever tasted something like Cadbury chocolate or Lind chocolate and then tasted Hershey's, I think it's pretty obvious to everybody that Hershey's has some sort of aftertaste. Some people love it. Mm -mm, yeah, we do. Quick take in the chocolate. And some people just downright hate it. I believe that its strange flavor is actually caused by a preservative. And I think that I thought this for years and that's part of the reason why I don't much care for it. But I was thinking about it the other day and this is just me pulling things out of thin air. So let's take a trip to where it all started in Hershey, Pennsylvania. I'm the only person here. Why am I here? Milton Hershey came from a not so wealthy family. He always knew he wanted to make candy when he grew up. So as a teenager, he did a four year apprenticeship with a confectioner named Joseph Royer. A confectioner is just somebody whose occupation specializes in creating sweets. When Milton was just 21 years old, he started his own company. Unfortunately, after six long years, the company went under. Ooh. Milton then did another apprenticeship learning how to make caramel. Caramel, 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 caramel. You got any more of that chocolate? No, oh my God. He then started the Lancaster Caramel Company. And to his surprise, the company did very well. Milton started coating his caramel in chocolate and later decided to perfect his chocolate into his very own chocolate bars. But Milton had some big competition. At this time, the Swiss were known as the masters of chocolate making. He knew that he had to make his chocolate better than theirs. To understand how Milton created his own chocolate bar, we need to take a dive into chocolate's history. Chocolate has been around for thousands of years. In November of 2007, anthropologists from the University of Pennsylvania announced the discovery of cacao residue on pottery excavated in Honduras that could be dated as far back as 1400 BC. The origin of the word traces back to the Aztec word meaning, yes, this. This word that I'm not gonna pronounce because I'm gonna butcher it, which refers to a bitter drink brewed from cocoa. Caco, cacoa, ca cacao, oh my gosh, cacao, what is wrong with me? Which refers to a bitter drink brewed from cacao beans. Now this is where it gets a little interesting. The Latin word for the cacao tree is this, fiombro cacao. I probably am butchering that too. <laughs> this word translates to food of the gods. All right, now why would they call it food of the gods? You would think that this has some medicinal value or some benefit to it. For starters, the cacao bean has caffeine in it and who doesn't love caffeine? <laughs> Not me, I don't like it. <laughs> Take the damn chocolate, go, get it. <sighs> and secondly, cacao powder is packed with flavonoids. These nutrients have been shown to help lower blood pressure, lower blood pressure, blood, blood. I'm having a stroke, oh my God. <laughs> Why can I not say that? These nutrients have been shown to help lower blood pressure, improve blood flow to the heart and brain, and also aid in preventing blood clots. The flavonoids in cacao powder may also aid in preventing diabetes. Why, hello everybody. What are you doing? I back up, so you're saying that I'm fighting diabetes right now? No. Cacao isn't necessarily the same thing as cocoa. Cacao is the raw, unprocessed version of cocoa. Cocoa is usually referring to the beans once they've been fermented and are ready for the chocolate process. Fermented? I'll get to that in a minute. These cacao drinks had benefits, but they didn't taste great. To accommodate for the bitter flavor, they started adding in sugar and dairy products like milk and cream. This led to its solid form we call chocolate, but it didn't happen overnight. Making chocolate is no easy process. It all starts with the cacao tree. Each tree has pods, also called fruits. Inside of the pods are seeds, which we call beans. The pods are cut from the tree and the beans are removed. They then move to the fermentation process, where they're left for about two to nine days. 
Once they're fermented, they need to be dried. They're placed out in the sun for about seven to 14 days. After all of this is said and done, it's time to create the cocoa mass, also known as the cocoa liqueur. Is it liquor? Is it liqueur? It's spelled the same, right? During this process is where the beans are cleaned, roasted, and ground up. The final step to making what we call chocolate is to take this cocoa mass, or cocoa liqueur, liquor, however you want to say it, and add cocoa butter and sweeteners. If we stop here, we have dark chocolate. But if we want milk chocolate, we have to take it a step further. I bet I know what the last one is. is it mil milk? How did you know I was gonna say that? I am losing my patience. Now here is where we discover why Hershey's chocolate tastes the way it does. You can't just add milk to chocolate and call it a day. A gallon of milk begins to spoil after just two hours of sitting on the counter, so using fresh milk and chocolate wasn't ideal. In 1867, Swiss pharmacist by the name of Henry Nestle created one of the first known baby formulas. It was a combination of cow's milk, wheat flour, and sugar. Then the idea of using this as a milk substitute in chocolate arised. This is when Milton jumped on the chocolate trend and started experimenting. But he didn't want to use milk powder, so what did he use? Milk begins to scald around 170 degrees Fahrenheit, or 76 degrees Celsius. Water boils at 212 degrees Fahrenheit, or 100 degrees Celsius. So in order to boil off all of the water in milk, which by the way is crucial because water is one of the main reasons why milk spoils so quickly, you end up burning the milk before evaporating all of the water, which would make it taste terrible. Beep. However, if you put milk into a vacuum, you can boil the water off at a much lower temperature. For example, the unit of measure for a vacuum is inches of mercury. If we have a vacuum at 27.75 inches of mercury, the water that's present in milk will begin to boil off at 104 degrees, or 40 degrees Celsius, never actually scalding the milk. Granted, you have to cook it for a much, much longer time. So really what Milton did here is he just created his own condensed milk. And using condensed milk over powdered milk had its benefits, like the fact that liquids are much easier to pump through a factory than it is to use blower fans for a powder. Now for the reason why Hershey's chocolate has that peculiar taste. It turns out it was the process of him creating this condensed milk. By Milton cooking his milk for such a long time, he actually soured it. What? That's, it's not what you think. Sour just refers to milk going through acidification. Soured milk has a tart and bitter flavor to it, but it's not spoiled. And the acid that gives it its flavor is known as butyric acid. This is the reason why Hershey's chocolate has that sour and acidic aftertaste in comparison to European chocolate. Oh yeah, well there's tons of chocolate in America that tastes like that. That would be because Hershey's the leading competitor and they changed their recipes to better match the one that was winning. Oh. As time went on, it became the norm for chocolate in America to taste this way. This is why some Americans who grew up eating Hershey's chocolate prefer this over European chocolate and vice versa. Why some Europeans don't like American chocolate. It's not that Hershey's sucks. I mean, obviously not. They sell millions of these bars a day. It's just that some people prefer that tangy taste over something rich and creamy, myself included. So does Hershey's chocolate taste the way it does because of a preservative? No, it's actually caused from a fresh ingredient that was cooked at a really low temperature for such a long time. I feel like it kind of changes the way I think about it knowing that it's not a preservative anymore. 